Since my fiance Rhea was recently made a permanent home worker, I've been planning to build her a bespoke desk which will fit in this corner, replacing this rickety old temporary table that she's been using, and also this chest of drawers. So that's what I'm going to be working on in this video. This video is in collaboration with Medite Smartply, manufacturers of a wide range of high quality MDF products, who are kindly providing the moisture resistant MDF I'll be using a little later in the project. You can learn more about their products, get technical advice and more in the Medite Smartply members area, link to which is in the description box below. This desk is going to be made up of three components, the first of which will be a solid wood framework to support one side of the desktop. And for that I'm going to be using beech, mainly because I have a lot of it, but also because Rhea wanted the wood to be pale in colour. I started ripping some clean edges at the table saw, and then I ripped it into widths. This timber is well seasoned and dry, and as these pieces were pretty straight and free of bow, twist or warping, I skipped face planing and just used the thickness planer to clean up the faces of each board. You'll see one of these pieces has some large splits in it though, and I'll need to deal with that shortly. I cut the pieces to length at the mitre saw and I could cut most of that split area away, but not quite all of it, so I mixed up some epoxy and a bit of sawdust to help fill the gap and hold it all together. And I used masking tape to prevent it dripping out from the other side. Once it was dry, I peeled away the tape and sanded away the excess, and it ended up looking pretty good. I'm going to be cutting some finger joint joinery for the desk frame using this jig that I made in a recent video. I'll leave a link to that down below in the description box. I set the blade height to the thickness of the material, and then I can cut the joinery. I applied wood glue and then I can assemble two of these rectangular assemblies and get some clamps on there. Before leaving them to dry I just double check with a speed square that they are square and then remove the excess glue with a damp cloth. Once the glue was dry I used the belt sander to start flushing up those finger joints. And then I followed up with my random orbit sander starting at 80 and then 120 grit to remove any belt sanding marks and get a nice smooth finish. I pulled out another piece of beach which I can use to make the rest of the frame and after ripping this piece in half at the table saw, I got that put through the thickness of two. And I'm cutting three pieces to length here, these will be rails that will join my two rectangular leg assemblies together. I used a hand plane just to square up the edges of each board. And here I'm offering up everything to where I want it to be and marking up where I can drill out some mortises so that I can add some dominoes or floating tenons. I can then assemble it all and you'll see here that I have two thin rails running along the back of the desk frame and one thicker rail at the front to enable a desk chair to sit underneath it. And as it's the winter, the radiator comes in handy for helping the glue to dry. This would make for a great strong desk frame as it is, it just needs a top. But for the corner desk design that I'm going for, there's a lot more work still left to do on this project. I rounded over the edges using my trim router and then did the final sanding up to 180 grit. I'm using water-based varnish for the finish as I want to preserve that light colour of the beach. There are links to all of my favourite finishes including this one down below in the My Tools link in the description box. The first coat tends to raise the grain of the wood, so once it's dry I sprayed on a little water and denibbed with some 400 grit paper to get everything silky smooth. And then I applied a second and final coat. 
Now onto the second component of the desk. I've got some of Medite Smartply's 18mm moisture resistant MDF for this and I can start ripping it down into panels. I use my crosscut sled at the table saw to cut the panels to length. I think this is my first time using good quality MDF as far as I can remember. I've only ever used the cheapest stuff that you can get in DIY stores and there are some definite advantages to spending a little bit more to get good quality MDF. Especially when it comes to making things like furniture and cabinets. It cuts and machines cleaner, it seems to me to be more dense and rigid, and it has low formaldehyde content and VOCs. So as you can see I'm using dominoes again for the joinery and I can start assembling with glue and clamps. So I've got the pieces glued up in two assemblies so far, one over here and one over here. And the glue is now dry so I can start removing the clamps. I've also clamped on a couple of plywood clamping squares to the side, ready to map the two together. This is a bit of an awkward glue up. It would have been much easier to build two independent boxes and just glue them together, but I really wanted that side panel on the right hand side to be one complete board so that it didn't have a join in it. Here I just needed to release the clamp to enable me to slot the top panel in place and then I can get everything clamped nice and tight. While the glue dries I can start making the drawer boxes to sit inside and I'm going to be using some thinner 12mm Medite Smart Ply MR MDF to make those. After gluing and pinning the four sides with the 18 gauge nailer, I can then glue on a bottom panel which I'd cut at the table saw to pull the drawer box into square. I added some clamps and weights. No fancy joinery as far as these drawers are concerned, but I tend to always make my drawer boxes like this, as I know they can hold a ridiculous amount of weight. My workbench full of tools is a good example of that. I picked up some of these drawer runners and I can get them mounted to the drawer boxes. And then the mating runners get mounted inside the cabinet. I'm doing this upside down for no particular good reason and using a piece of ply just to space it from the bottom panel. I always allow 13mm space on each side between the sides of the cabinet and the drawer box and that seems to work great every time. So I've run into a problem. The problem I was expecting to have was fitting these runners to the inside of such a shallow space, but actually I got the screws in there just fine. But the problem I have is getting the drawer runner to seat inside the cabinet runner. As you can see, I need a lot more clearance at the top here and I really should have thought about that. So I'm gonna try removing a bit of material, something like this, and hopefully that will solve the problem. I made a plunge cut using my circular saw and then cut away some height from the back panel of the drawer and then used the jigsaw to cut away material at both ends. I did need to nibble away a little bit more than expected but now it fits really nicely. After a bit of sanding it almost looks like these cuts were always supposed to be there. I then moved on to doing all of the final sanding up to 180 grit to prep the MDF ready for painting. I've got some acrylic primer here and I'm going to use a roller to apply it. After the first coat it soaks in a little bit to the end grain as you can see here, so I apply a second coat and then as you can see I have pretty good coverage. So then I can denib everything using some 400 grit wet and dry paper to get everything nice and smooth and ready for the top coat. And I'm using hard wearing acrylic eggshell tinted to a colour called Victorian Silk which is a warm off white colour. I got this mixed by a paint shop online. I gave it three coats in total, denibbing again in between each coat. Using a fan to blow air across it speeds up the drying time quite a lot. 
Here I'm cutting and milling some more beech, which I can use to make the draw fronts to match the leg frame that I made earlier. And this piece needed face planing as well as thickness planing to get it flat. As it was quite thick, I resawed this piece so that I can get two pieces out of this one board. And I can finish that cut on the bandsaw. And then I glued them together to give me a panel wide enough to get both draw fronts out of. I can then cut the draw fronts to size at the table saw. And I added a round over to the front edges. And these got two coats of varnish too. To mount them I'm going to drill some oversized holes which are going to allow the solid wood draw fronts to expand and contract with seasonal humidity changes. Wood movement won't be a problem on the slim draw front but definitely would be on this wider panel. I then offer up the fronts where I want them and use some hot glue to position them. And then I can add screws and a large washer to secure them in place. Rhea found these drawer handles that she liked online, so I can get those fitted too. Later on I'll be adding a back panel to help support the cantilever on this component of the desk, but I'll talk more about that later. Now onto the third and final component, the desktop, for which I'm using 18mm Medite Smartply MR MDF, and after marking up the shape based on the dimensions from my original drawing, I decided to add some gentle curves to the shape by drawing around a paint can. I can then make all the straight cuts with the track saw, and use the jigsaw to cut the curves. I want to add a grommet to the desktop, and these pencil marks represent where the leg frame will be situated underneath, so I can decide where to drill the hole, and I used a 60mm hole saw bit drilling from both sides just to get a nice clean cut. After adding roundovers, sanding, priming and painting in the same way as I did for the drawer boxes. I can then start getting the old furniture removed from the room and bring in the new components. I'm using screws to secure the desk frame to the desktop and plenty of them too because they're going to add rigidity and stop the desktop from sagging. I'm not using any glue here as I want to be able to dismantle the desk should the need arise in future. I can then get the drawer component positioned and secure that to the desktop at both the front and the back. Once it's secured I can then add the back panel which I mentioned earlier in the video. This is going to help support that cantilevered top drawer box. And because these surfaces are painted I'm going to use polyurethane glue held in place with a few brad nails until the glue dries. and the nail holes later got filled, sanded and painted. Now I can get the grommet added. So the main idea behind this desk was that the left hand side would be a work area for rear and the right hand side would be a kind of dressing table. The slim drawer is for makeup brushes and stuff like that and the larger drawer is for hair stuff. I also added a hair straightener and hair dryer holder on the right hand side. And after a bit of cable management, the desk was all set up and ready to use. I'm pretty pleased with how the desk turned out. I lost track of how long this project took because I was working on it in between some other projects, but I'd estimate it was somewhere between three and a half and four days in total. 
I'd like to say a big thank you to Medite Smart Apply for making this video possible, and I'll be using their products again in the near future, so stay tuned for that. I'm also going to be doing some experiments with it in a future video to see how it performs alongside some, shall we say, less premium MDF. And please do check out the Medite Smart Apply members area, link to which is in the description box below. Please subscribe if you haven't already for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to help support the channel, you could do that via Patreon or YouTube channel membership where you can get exclusive content, early access to my videos, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.